Blackmagic came up with major announcement yesterday with a new Ursa camera, a new version of DaVinci Resolve, but more importantly, and maybe a news that would concern most users out there, a new cinema camera line, the Pixis 6K. Last year, Blackmagic brought us the Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K full frame, and a lot of users were complaining that the form factor of the Blackmagic 6K full frame cinema camera was from the pocket line. In fact, many users asked Blackmagic over the years to develop a more box kind of oriented camera, and this is exactly what they did this time with the Pixis. The Pixis is basically a more traditional kind of high-end production camera for only $3,000 though. That will basically give you the same image quality that you would get in the 6K full frame, which is already extremely high for its price point. So what are the advantages of the Pixis 6K compared to the cinema camera 6K full frame? Well, first, the, the, no the name is way shorter, which is great for me to pronounce every time I do a review. But more seriously, you have something that is more riggable and more flexible. The Pixix 6K comes with a box form factor, which is more easier to rig and to really customize depending on your workflow. And it also comes with different mounts, PL, EF, as well as L mount, which could be attractive to more customers depending on the kind of lenses that you have. It also comes with a customizable uh, plate, base plate, that you can attach to the camera. And I'm sure that third parties company will come with tons of accessories for this, like they did for the Reds or other similar uh, box cameras. Now, not only does it come with plates, but it also comes with thread mounts. So you won't need to have a cage, a dedicated cage for this camera, which is not the case with uh, the Blackmagic cinema camera 6k full frame you will be able to directly mount handles directly mount base plate um, rails or other accessories that you would need for this particular camera which makes it way more customizable and way more flexible to really fit different kind of production um, requirements now like it is the case in the 6k uh, full frame from blackmagic you will have access to open gate which is great nowadays because more and more production requires both vertical and horizontal um, deliverables. So having the open gate on this camera with a 6.2K will really allow you to take advantage of that. And if you are able to shoot um, both content at the same time, keeping in mind that your deliverable would have to be both horizontal and vertical, you're able to frame so that it fits perfectly that way. Now, in terms of image quality, I am totally convinced, uh, having tested and used uh, the Blackmagic 6K full frame before, um, that the image quality will be great on this camera. In fact, at ProNews, we also created um, some uh, Muay Thai video with the 6K full frame, and I was extremely um, happy with the results that I got with the 13 stop of dynamic range, which are good enough and maybe not as much as what other cameras, uh, camera makers pretend to reach. But usually Blackmagic, when they say that they reach 13 stops, it actually um, is the case, right? So that, that is a good news. The fact that you also have a dual ISO uh, on, on this sensor is also great because it allows you to also manipulate, I mean, first decrease your uh, noise as much as possible and stay in those proper values of noise, knowing which ISO you should select, right? Now, one great aspect of this camera is also the side screen. If you've used Blackmagic before, you know that their uh, interface, their UI is great, is one of the most intuitive and simplest UI out there. And having it on the camera, on the side screen is, and, and the side screen is also one, 1,500 nits, is a great thing to have because you will be able to easily control your um, different settings with this touch screen and easily review your footage, even if it's outside, if you want to show it to your client directly, um, delete them on the spot if needed. The Blackmagic UI is great for doing all of those. So having access to this particular screen on, this, on the side of the camera is also great news in my opinion. Now this camera can record in B-Row as well as H.264. 
Um, there is no ProRes support at the moment. So if you use the 6K4 frame, you are kind of familiar with this, is that they don't support ProRes, which is kind of a strategy, I think, from Blackmagic to really push people to use B-Row more and more and adopt the B-Row workflow, which is understandable because it's their ecosystem, right? They want you to use the full ecosystem for the best support that they can give you. But I can understand that it can be limiting for some um, production workflow where they really want to focus on ProRes. But if you are okay with the B-Row workflow, personally, I'm totally fine with that because I use DaVinci as well. Um, having B-Row access so raw footage, 6.2K open gate, uh, as well as 4K HQ, 4K DCI. Um, it's honestly great news. For $3,000, you have a flexible um, cubic kind of um, style cameras that allows you to do all of these. Honestly, this is great news for the industry. And I'm excited by this camera and I really want to, to test it and maybe purchase it for myself because this is really a camera that I feel like could I could do great things with. So we talked a lot about okay what we are excited about uh, when it comes to this camera, right? The flexibility, the fact that uh, it is, it's the cubic factor, right? The fact that it's compatible also with the Ursa accessories. This is something that I forgot to mention the 6.2K open gate and uh, the different mounts as well, the, the PL, the EF, as well as the L mount. But what are the limitations of this camera? Well, there are a few, right, that you should be aware. First, no internal ND filters. Um, you don't have internal ND filters like it's the case on uh, competitors, for example, for Sony cameras. But those competitors are also way higher in terms of price point. So this is something that you need to be aware of. Internal ND filters are great. It's a great tool to have, honestly, not to have to worry too much about um, carrying around external ND, but it's not the end of the world. And at $3,000, honestly, you can understand why uh, Blackmagic has to make some compromise, right? To, to compromise on um, what they give you and what they don't give you. So this is understandable, in my opinion. A second thing that is also missing in this design is the absence of V-mount. Um, you would also maybe want to have direct V-mount and not using Sony batteries like it has been the case so far. But just to be clear here, this is not the usual Sony battery that you will have on uh, the 6K uh, cinema camera. Uh, this is a different one that will allow you to have about three hours of battery life. Is that a huge limitation? Honestly, you have base plate and you would be able to have battery directly mounted on those base plates through um, some um, roads or something. So that's not a huge limitation either. As long as you're able to power the camera itself through a V-mount adapter, no problem for me, that's okay. And another limitation would be um, the fact that it only supports B-Row and not ProRes. So this is something that could be something that is limiting for some kind of production, but that really depends on your workflow. We also have mini XLR, I think, on the um, Blackmagic Pixie 6K. So if you want that full XLR, this is not what you want to get here. All right, so let us know down in the comment what you think about the Pixie 6K. Um, are you excited about this camera? Do you think you would want to get one? Personally, I can't wait to put it into the test because this is a camera that is kind of affordable, that can do great things, that is customizable, and that has the form factor that we've been asking so much for to Blackmagic for the years, right? And they finally did it. So yeah, it's a great thing to hear. I'm really excited and I hope that we will be able to test it and put it to the test for you to see as well. And yeah, I also want to get one for myself. So let me know down in the comment what you think. So thank you for watching Pro News. Make sure that you subscribe if you want to see a future test of the camera. And we'll see you in the next one.